you have a failure, then give it some time for it to be repaired, plus time to next failure. So you have a situation like this, you have a good state, and you have a bad state, and here you have a failure. And here is, is your repair. So if you could make a uh, some uh, time diagram here, let's say here is operational. And this is time. And then it could be go down. And let's assume here it is under repair. And then it is operational, and then it is under repair. Under repair means uh, your uh, car is being repaired, that means it's not available. So here, notice that this is time to failure is this. The system was up here, and here a failure occurred, and it went down. So this is the time to failure. And this here is the time to repair is here. Time to repair is this. And what about time between failures? Notice that this is a failure, right? And the previous failure was here, when it went from operational to under repair. So here is your time between failures. And hence, you can see that the mean time between failures is going to be the mean time to failure plus the mean time to repair. Now sometimes people uh, use the term mean time between failures and mean time to failure interchangeably. Uh, they will, for describing the same thing, they will sometimes call it by this name and sometimes they will call it by this name. And that uh, would be uh, a, a reasonable approximation provided mean time between repair is negligible. So if mean time between failures, mean time to repair is negligible, if the system goes up very soon, then uh, mean time between failures is almost the same thing as mean time to failure. And then uh, uh, there's another uh, thing, steady state availability. This is a question we will come back uh, later again after some calculation. But uh, we know enough to have an expression for this. So what fraction of the time your uh, system is available? Well, total time and uh, in the numerator, the time when it is available, that means mean time to failure. And the total one cycle time is, of course, mean time to failure plus mean time to repair. Right? So that means fraction of the time the system is available. Now let us look at another reliability measure that is sometimes used for very high reliability systems. Now let us say if you have a... Uh, yeah. I had a couple of doubts regarding the feedback module and the phone call, so should we do that later? 
Uh, so what are the questions? Uh, do you have a do, uh, do you have the set of questions? Oh, I, I forgot. I should have uh, printed it. I can't remember it. So okay. So there was one question in the feedback uh, in the quiz, which was like, um, so there's a two input XOR gate, exclusive OR gate, right? Okay. And there are six possible um, stack stuff at faults. So how many? I mean, if, if you do fault collapsing, I think. I mean, if you can reduce the number of faults, how many? Um, stuck it falls, can you test? Oh, I see. So, so the question is this: yeah. did you say that you have a two input exclusive OR gate, mm -hmm. and the question was uh, to uh, um, see uh, how you can do fault reduction. No, it's like reduction, fault reduction. reduction. How many uh, like tests? Like we have like six stuck at faults. Yeah, yeah. Right. Six, but how like many? The minimum number that you can test, and you'll still be fine. So, oh, so so just a uh, fault. Uh, we have to reduce the number of faults, yes. right? Yeah. Okay, so what did you? What was your answer? <laughs> I mean, first I thought it was just four because I mean, for a two and input gate you reduce it to four. Okay. But then I did it on. I worked it out and I thought it was three, but it turns out both of them are wrong. So, so. I was not sure which is. I mean. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so what answers uh, people you got? I guess I have to refresh my memory. You can. Because you it doesn't can. apply to XOR gates, it's only. Oh, yeah, you can't reduce the stack as well. They have to stay six. Yeah. Right. So, so basically, so you thought about it and you found that uh, you don't find any equivalent faults. Yeah. Yeah. Hence, you stack cannot uh, collapse. Yeah. Yeah. Because if I, uh, to collapse the faults, so that, yeah, that uh, could be the right answer. So, here, uh, Stuck at zero here. So stuck at zero. So you are going to have let's say this is x and this is y, and this is z. So normally z is equal to x bar y plus x y bar, and faulty z is equal to. Now let's see. This is uh, zero. So that means the output is equal to x is 0. So output is equal to just uh, y. Is that correct? OK. Uh, is there any other fault that? Uh, would be equivalent to this. Stuck at zero here would obviously have a different effect, so would not be the same fault. Stuck at zero is actually make, going to make output zero. Stuck at one here is going to make output one. So it turns out that uh, there are really no equivalent faults there. So I think that you are on the right track. So. Um, and I guess that seems to be the right answer that there are no equivalent faults. Mm -hmm. And hence, you cannot do uh, fault uh, collapsing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, any uh, comments on this? So, some questions could be trick questions. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so, you may have to uh, think about some questions. Uh, are there any other uh, questions on that? Uh, well, the quiz is already in the time for quiz is already gone. We cannot discuss the specific questions on the feedback module because still we have some time. But you can, uh, if you have a question about interpretation of the question, we could discuss that. Do you have office hours? Pardon? Do you have specific office hours? Yeah, I mean, let's see. Uh, my, I have office hours uh, today. Is, uh, yeah, in fact, I have office hours right after the class. So I think from uh, 11 to 12. So I, yeah, I should be able to learn to twelve. Any other uh, questions? The, the feedback module is, uh, as I was mentioning, uh, it's going to take some time. So allow enough time for it. Uh,
The exclusive OR gates, uh, it turned out that they are rather interesting. Um, it's not a general purpose design element, since some of you are electrical engineers, you know that. But in some cases, it can, come, it can give you a really efficient design in terms of number of transistors. And also, it has some very nice uh, testing properties. So it is highly testable. Uh, on the other hand, it has uh, some of the peculiar properties like this. So, OK. Any other questions or comments? I had a question on the quiz as well. Oh, OK. Um, this is the one about the multiplexer. Ah, okay. The multiplexer has four data inputs with two select lines, and when S1, S0 equals 1, 0, input, input I2 is selected and routed to the output. If line I1 has D error coming on it, what values do we need for S1 and S0 to propagate the error to the output? Okay, yeah, so let's uh, look at this here. So we have a multiplexer, and the inputs are, let us assume, called I0, I1, I2. And I3, and here is the output. And we have two select lines. And select lines are called S0 and S1? Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that correct? And uh, so with uh, 0, 1, this is selected. Is, is that correct? Is that what we say? Um, yeah, that's right. OK, just, just to make sure that, uh, OK, so the point, what is the question then? It says, if line I1 has D coming in on it, what okay. values do we need to propagate that error to the output for, on S1 and S0? OK. Now, incidentally, uh, sometimes uh, multiplexers are labeled like this. Uh, this is uh, 0, 1, this is 1, 0, 1, 1. So sometimes multiplexers are labeled according to the input combination needed. Uh, sometimes they are labeled this way, 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, but anyway, so question is, we have a D coming here. So how can you make this D come out here? And this is, as I was mentioning, the D algorithm is, we have seen it at the gate level, but it is really general. You can apply it at any level. As long as you know the nature of an element, how you can propagate the signal out. So the question is, how can you propagate this out here, right? OK, so how would you do that? Uh, so that uh, we have a D propagated here. OK, what if you apply 0, 0 here? And if you have 0, 0 here, then obviously uh, this is going to come out, which is not the one which has the error, right? So obviously, you need to apply a 0, 1 to propagate this here, in this case. And uh, whatever it is, whatever we have here, it doesn't matter. But as long as you have the right uh, value well, and select line. I that down was wrong, but maybe not. Uh, Yeah, I'll have to uh, double check that. So uh, occasionally it is possible for a, a question to have a bug in it. So sometimes we are thinking of something and, but probably not because. Uh, I think it was correct. Because that's correct. Zero. Um, yeah, it, yeah, it was something like one zero zero or something. <laughs> like that. So yeah, yeah I, I think that, that sometimes there can be some confusion about zero, which which is sometimes there's confusion about. Uh, which is this bit and which is this bit. Mm -hmm. So basically, in order to uh, make sure there is no confusion, I explicitly mention in the question, so you can figure out what is the uh, construction of this multiplexer. And so you know, basically your answer has to be consistent with that. But that is one possible uh, way uh, this could be confusing because you could by mistake uh, assume that uh, 